Hey, it's Eric here at Peachtree Classic Cars. I'm with my buddy Steven, and this is his 1964 Chevrolet C10. And it's a short bed, step side truck with a V8, automatic power steering. We're gonna take it for a drive. So what's up, buddy? What's up? <laughs> Got a nice, I like the exhaust sound. It's like, it's a perfect truck exhaust sound. So we're gonna take a little drive and uh, look for a parking lot where we can pull over and do a video inspection for you guys. Do any of the gauges work? It looks like the oil pressure gauge. Uh, battery, oil pressure, and uh, I don't think the temperature or fuel work. Okay. Speedometer looks like it's not working. Yeah, the speedometer doesn't work. Power steering, man, that's nice. Oh, yeah. Transmission shifts nice. This is one thing. I'll, oh, does the radio work? No, radio doesn't work. It's a, it's a new radio, it's in there, it just needs to be wired up okay. with, with speakers. One thing I do like is the built-in air conditioning units. That's yeah, a big deal. it blows super, super hard. Yeah, it blows nice. So, the AC is not completely hooked up. Everything's hooked up except the air conditioning compressor needs a belt. And it, it needs to be recharged. It's an old R12 system, so it just needs a conversion done to it. Great driving truck. This is one of those trucks that I feel like it's it's like almost there. Oh yeah, we'll find a place right up here. I mean, the park right here. Crow Realty, let's pull in there. Nobody here. Perfect, yeah, it's good. So I was just saying that, you know, for the money, I feel like, you know, great deal on this truck because it's like, it's one of those trucks that's almost there, but there's just those little things that you could do as a project if you wanted. One thing is, is the, when they installed the CD player, they could have done a better job cutting that in. So it could be cleaned up a little bit. Uh, the heater is hooked up and it works just fine. Um, the Like I said, the air conditioning is also all hooked up except for the, you know, it's real easy to open up the hood. Engine runs nice and smooth. It's got a great sounding exhaust. The air compressor's uh, free. It just needs a new belt put on it and it needs to be recharged. Really nice valve covers and air cleaner. Brand new wheels and tires, 17s all the way around. Just put those on, probably only got, you know, 10 miles on these wheels and tires. I mean, they're, they would just put them on. Yeah, brakes, you just rebuilt the brake system all the way around, all four? Yeah, all four, it's got all new, uh, it's all got all new uh, drums, interior parts, uh, new rubber lines on the front, uh, and the whole system has been bled and redone with new wheel cylinders. So looking at the lines on this truck, if you kind of just look down the side, the truck, the lines are really straight. It's a really straight truck. And the only thing that I'm seeing a couple of little spots. I mean, of course, one little spot here. There's a couple of little, you know, maybe like it was parked under a tree and acorn. You can see that one the most. And it's really not that bad. I'm trying to get it, accent it with the camera doing that right there. But, and honestly, that might be as easy as the, you know, the paintless dent removal guys, a lot of times I'll, I'll get those guys to pop those for, you know, 50 bucks a piece or something. I love this color <clears throat> and it's actually like this dark gunmetal gray. It's got a black top and it's kind of tough to see, but the top is actually painted black down the side. And so you can see the two colors there. This is actually one of my favorite of all the colors to paint an antique truck. And uh, it kind of reminds me of the, uh, of the, the truck in the expendables. That was a 55 Ford, of course, but it's the same kind of color combination, you know, black wheels that the dark gunmetal gray. As we go around the truck and get real picky with it, there are a couple of little spots. There's a little spot here. And uh, a lot of times that happens, it, oftentimes things like that even happen right after they get painted. They paint the truck, then they put the hood back on and they bump it on something. And it's unfortunate. That probably did happen later because I'm thinking if it was at the paint shop, at least they would have touched it up. It's a little spot here, but you know, and a little spot here on the, on the hood. 
Um, driver quality, I mean, it's a good looking truck. This is what we call like a 20 footer. And going by the paint shop and having them put the little computer eye on it and mixing up some touch up paint, you could walk around and uh, do touch ups, you know, just even by hand, feather them in. And, um, or if you wanted to get really picky with it, drop it off at the paint shop. I got a couple of guys, most people know a couple of guys like with a paint shop down the road from their house that will walk around a truck like this and do all the touch up for three or 400 bucks at the most and make it look like a brand new truck. So the top looks great. The drip rails are in good shape, no rust or anything in the drip rails. Doors open and close. And the door weather stripping, actually, we just noticed this right when we were about to pull out the driveway. So Steven's gonna, he's, when we get back to the shop, he's gonna pull this off and fix that. That's not uncommon just for the, you know, the weather stripping to get a little loose sometimes. I really like the seat cover. I like the fact that it's got a little blue accent to it. I'm personally not a big fan of the steering wheel, but it's not very expensive to get a, put an original style steering wheel back on it. But it does have power steering, so it steers easily. Uh, it was an original three speed. And so you can see the fact that they, you know, just left the, um, the clutch pedal there. That's pretty common. Um, a lot of times guys will do that because it's not that hard. You can literally undo the clutch pedal super easy with the, you know, just going up higher. But, um, a lot of people leave it there because what if you want to go back to original and put a three-speed back in it? I think the automatic's a nice upgrade. Dash looks good. They did a nice job, too, putting the vents in. It's kind of funny. They did a crappy job putting the stereo in, but they did a nice job putting the air conditioning vents in. That's a huge plus, by the way, that the, all the AC is already vented and done. And all you got to do is just have it, you know, converted. So the original fuel tank was behind the seat and uh, now it's been moved to the back. And this is one thing that I would do too. Like I said, all the little things, you know, that, that I like buying a truck like this because I say on a Saturday, this is something I can fix. Order it off of Summit Racing, measure this hole, cover it. And I was just telling Steven, it, you know, we would have had more time and been able to order a billet cover or something, you know, the kind of flip top and that's a pretty common thing or even put a wood bed in here with a, and put a new bit flip top billet but that is sealed there's no water getting in there this bumper has been painted to match which just looks really nice i love the black combination the black wheels tie into the top vent window on the back these aren't my favorite for aesthetic purposes but for practical purposes i love them you roll the windows down you open up the back and uh, it just creates a lot, lot of, you know, uh, air volume flowing through. Nice clean inner fender wells. I don't see any rust in here. I'm trying to let the camera adjust real quick. Some undercoating there, original undercoating that you can see. But I don't see any rust in this fender well. Same here. There's a little support there that looks like it could... I'm not sure why that's like that, actually. Probably got turned or something. There's your fuel cell. And with the bumper and everything present, it, uh, it hides that fuel cell well. The exhaust system appears to be newer. Just the steel and everything just looks new and nice. Sounds really good too. Again, another rust-free fender well all the way around. I'm gonna get on, sacrifice myself on this wet grass. Get under here. Nice, clean. So, wow, this is actually, this is the first time I've gotten down here and looked at this, so. If you're watching this video, you're watching it as fresh as I'm looking at it right now. Super clean, solid rockers. These are the original floor pans. Cab supports are good. They're a little, you know, a little weather rotten. That's pretty, pretty common, but they're all solid in there. And of course, just zero rust that I'm seeing. We'll go around to the other side. It's a really solid truck, Steven. And that's a, that goes a long way for me. Same thing. I mean, these are these are the original cab corners. They're still in original condition. Looks like the rockers may have had a little bit of rust in them and been puttied, 
But I mean, the cab to frame, uh, floor pan supports, all that. I mean, everything under here. Really, really solid. So there you have it, 1964 C10. Love the step side too. Actually, what's really interesting is these past, if you go back and look at my sold page, haven't had a step side in a while. Keep getting fleet sides in. And in fact, uh, to you guys who are, I've got a lot of guys who call me and say, hey, I'm not a fleet side guy, I'm a step side guy. Let me know next time you get a step side in. So uh, you guys, you step side guys, give me a call on this one. This one runs great, drives great. Be a fun, you know, truck to have and do the little stuff to finish it up, you know, t touch up paint and stuff like that. One final thing, it's a bummer. The previous owner actually got a rock chip right here. And uh, so the nice thing is a new windshield is not that expensive. A lot of times too, you know, get your insurance on it, uh, drive it and uh, call the insurance company. A lot of times I've even had insurance, the insurance on a vehicles for a, a day or two. And the first thing that they're willing to do is fix the windshield. But I think the windshield glass is about $110, $120. You can order it out of a catalog, but most, um, most window companies, local window companies will still install the windshield on these antique automobiles and have even have these uh windows in stock are on order so give us a call uh check out the website peachtreeclassiccars.com